Hi, I'm Rui Israel. In this edition of Journeys in Photography, we're going to meet Ted Rigoni. Ted is a landscape art photographer from Tustin, California, but Ted's journey in photography was interrupted, interrupted by the devastating COVID-19 pandemic. Ted spent two years here in the desert, exploring, shooting, and developing his portfolio. His work isn't about the people that graze their cattle here, or the miners who came searching for gold and silver in this vast, unforgiving desert. Instead, Ted's work is about what they left behind, the metal. Ansel Adams said, landscape photography is one of life's biggest rewards and it can also be one of life's biggest disappointments. And oh my gosh, is he so right? When I began the Oxidize project, I was fascinated by how much metal man has left behind in the Mojave Desert. I started out by looking for abandoned metal in the various mining camps, and then I realized that once I found these metals, that I was going to do close-ups of them and collect images of the discarded cans and the rusting bolts and the metal laying all around. Once upon a time, all this held it together. For me, Oxidized is an art photography portfolio about dreams abandoned. What I realized after months of months of exploring, shooting, and reshooting in the Mojave is that the miners and ranchers from the mid-1800s to the late 1900s and more recently, well, they left behind metal that really defined their lives, and that metal has since oxidized, quite literally becoming colorful rust. But though these artifacts are rusting and deteriorating, they have become an incredible resource for fine art photography. I'm out here in the Mojave Desert and I'm um, here at this old abandoned, uh, looks like it's an old Ford vehicle, uh, probably older than I am. And I'm, I'm doing imaging for um, really stack focus. And what we're looking at is uh, some rust here on this old abandoned vehicle. And this is in line with uh, the exhibition I recently had that had to do with oxidized metal which is really look, taking a different look at metals that have been abandoned and discarded in the Mojave Desert. And I found that you can image them in a way that turns them into contemporary art, which is really a different way of looking at this. It's not something where many people think, well, let's haul that metal away and put it in a, in a dump somewhere. It's, let's look at this from a different perspective. And let's think about how these metals at one point were doing their duty for hauling ore bodies around or for helping a rancher. And uh, in this case, they're now doing duties for me, helping me create some uh, contemporary art. So what I'm doing here specifically is I'm looking through my camera lens and I'm doing some macro photography and I'll be doing stack focus, which means I'll be focusing on several different points here on this particular um, uh, part of this vehicle. And then once I get my images together, I'll take them back in the lab and then I'll take a look at how I'm going to put them together in post-production, and then how I'm going to add some color and really pump up the contrast in the image. And as I'm doing this, I find that I have to really take a number of different shots of the same item because it's hard to walk up to a piece of abandoned metal and immediately take one series of pictures or even a single picture and get it just exact way you want it the first time. That's a rare thing for any artist. For me, it really, I'm almost listening to what the metal says to me as I'm putting it together. And I find that I, as I'm getting into my images, I get more and more and oftentimes even get closer and closer until I get to that spot where now I've captured it. I've captured the essence of what it means to me and what it speaks to me in my particular workflow I shoot manual and as well when I do my actual stack focus I do that in a manual way 
I know you can do it um, in, internal to the camera and it'll actually do those stack focusing for you, but I like to be in control of that. So once I start an, an iteration of images, all I really have to do is do this minor change. I have this on a three second delay, which takes care of any um, shake in the camera. And I've been doing this for years. So I found I don't use a, a remote. And as long as it's not windy and the camera's very stable and, and I've got a really good stable tripod here, I find I can go through my iteration and my workflow and come up with a, a pretty us good usable set of images pretty much every single time. Ted, after two years spending working on your oxidized project, it must have been super disappointing to land a gallery show and then have it gone. How, how did you handle that? Well, at first it was heartbreaking. In virtue of the day that my show was supposed to open, COVID took over the world. And then as the summer progressed, I kept thinking we're going to get a chance to open it up and have an opening, have at least a one day view, but it never took place. And then, you know, along about August, it finally rolled around and the protocols were in place and we were able to do a one day limited attendance opening. Mm -hmm. So I got people in and they had a chance to look at my art and I had a chance to talk to some people and there was some excitement about what I had put together. Oxidize is about dreams abandoned, but you didn't abandon your dreams. Even though COVID shut you down in March, you were able to get your work published in different ways. So how'd you do that? What did you do? Thank you. I submitted my work to Dodd Ho Magazine, and, and you know when you submit your work to a reviewer, you wait days and days and you think that, oh, I'm going to get that email notifying me any day that it's in, and, and when I did, I was very, very excited and very surprised. And it took a lot of pride in knowing that my work was now available online and I was going to be able to have an online credit for some of my work. If you could use one word that keeps you developing, that keeps you shooting and coming up with new ideas, what would it be? word would be passion. It's the passion to just keep going out, keep exploring, keep shooting, and keep following your heart and keep developing your artist's aesthetic and your artist's mind. And for me, in shooting Oxidized, one of my images that I really enjoyed doing and I think was a, a, a perfect example of what it is that I like to shoot is my spiraling image and just seeing how the colors spiraled in together. And in, in my mind's eye, I can almost see that static piece of metal as it's turning, as it once did back in the old days with the old timers. I see that passion just looking in your eyes as you're talking about it. And it just, it's right here. I can really feel it. And I'm glad you're picking up on that because it is something cool to me. It's about who I am. It's about my art. So now that the oxidized project is over, I'm really curious to hear about what's coming up next. Any chance we can get a sneak peek? Thank you for asking the question, Rui. I'm working on vapor, and again, I'm not telling just anybody what I'm doing, but I'll let you know today. And so I'm using light and using moisture in the air to help generate an emotional range that's beyond anything that I might have done with my previous exhibition in, in Oxidized. And I'm finding out that it's really giving me a chance to look at a completely different viewpoint of photography and I think I might even be growing as, as an artist through this endeavor. So the whole secret to a journey in photography is to never abandon your dreams, right? Agreed. Never. Ted Rigoni is an exciting, passionate new artist, and I'm sure we're going to see his work as this journey continues. A journey that was interrupted, but never abandoned. Mm -hmm.